Welcome to my channel. I am GDP and today we're going to talk a little bit about the Christmas event and particularly about the new hero Forces. Um going to be talking about his uh, uses in the game, uh, particularly end game meta. Um, well, let's go ahead and start off by talking about the Christmas event. It looks like we're going to be getting uh, a new artifact called Snowheart. Um, it looks like it's going to be able to have some sort of speed debuff, um, control immunity, HP. I think it was HP. Yeah, HP and energy, I believe. Um, so we'll see how that works out. Um, I think those were uh, early leaks that we saw. Um, not confirmed, sorry, on those stats. It's like those, those stats on those aren't confirmed yet, but um we are going to be getting a new Halora skin um on the bottom right here uh not really sure why avoid heroes get a skin but i guess we're getting a skin um hopefully it's not i mean it's probably gonna have speed but i mean i mean it looked kind of nice it kind of looks like a christmas uh i got a little mask on um but yeah uh, Void Heroes getting a skin. Interesting. I didn't think that would happen, but they are. Um, then we are going to be also having some sort of RNG related type of thing in our uh, Christmas event. It looks like we're going to have some sort of slot machine here. Um, as you can see, we got like a Santa hat, gloves, stocking, um, bell ring, and a present box. Looking cute. Uh, but yeah, so we're going to have some sort of RNG mixed into this. Um, Wonder if it's going to be something like uh, Anniversary, where we had to spend a bunch of gems for the Sherlock card thing. Um, I wonder if it's going to be something like that. But let's go ahead and talk about these skills, or at least the new hero, Forces, starting off with his looks. Um, he kind of has that... I, I can see why some people are comparing him to Tix. Um, he kind of has that uh, similar color scheme. I mean, if you go to right here, um, I mean, he has the same color scheme. Even the uh, the monster in the back of Tix is kind of like the same color scheme as like the ghost looking thing in the back behind Forces. Um, but he also kind of does look like the three star in the shadow faction, Dark Priest. Um, the hat is just backwards on the point <laughs> in the image. And also, he's holding a book while Forces is holding like a, I think it was like a lantern or or like a bell or something. I think it was yeah, it's a bell. And then uh, Dark Priest has a cutout in his hat on the front side, while Forces has a cutout in his hat on the back side. So a lot of similarities there in Dark Priest. Maybe it's maybe it's Dark Priest from the future or something. Who knows? Um, well, let's go ahead and talk about the skills here. Soul Residence. When a round ends, deals damage to all enemies equal to 4, 6, 8% of their max HP. Damage caps at 1500% of attack. And inflicts one layer of Soul Corruption that lasts for 6 rounds. Soul Corruption is a skill effect. Each layer of Soul Corruption corrupts 4, 6, 8% of the target's max HP up to 40% and corrupted HP cannot be restored. Uh, when you void enable to V3, uh, the max HP damage goes to 10%, and it also looks like the corruption goes to 10% as well. Uh, cap stays the same, everything else looks the same. So damage goes up to 10% from 8%, uh, and the same with the corruption. Uh, so dark coil, Basic attacks deal uh, 200, 300, 600% of attack damage to the enemy with the highest attack and reduces them 10, 15, 25% of all damage dealt for three rounds. This effect is not stackable. And then when it is upgraded to V2, uh, the basic attacks deal 800% damage and reduces damage that the enemy does by 30% instead of 25%. So a 5% increase, um, and also I do believe this Dark Coil is going to be on the same 
uh, all damage reduce on Flora. That is something I do want to test uh, when he does come out. Um, but I do believe this 30% is going to be the same as Flora's 30%. Um, if not, it's going to be really strong together. Uh, but Necromancy, uh, this is basically his HP passive. He's going to be having HP, attack, uh, skill damage, uh, control immunity, and speed. I'll talk a little bit about this one later. And then Eminent Doom, his active here will deal, I'm just going to say, 800% of attack damage to four random enemies with a 30, 50, and a 100% chance to remove one attribute buff from the enemy and inflicts one, two, and three layers of Curse of Decay. Uh, Curse of Decay is a skill effect, triggers uh, when the enemy receives attribute buff. Once triggered, each layer of Curse of Decay offsets one of the, those buffs and deals 300, 500, and 1500% attack. That goes up really quickly. And after that, the Curse of Decay expires. Um, and when he's enabled, hit on everyone goes from 800% to 1400%, a quite a big jump. And then also it uh, looks like it, the layers stay the same. Yep, the layers stay the same. And then the damage goes from 1500% to 2500% on the Curse of Decay trigger. Um so first impressions, um, this is a PvP hero uh, right off the bat. Um, that's kind of something that we expect uh, from a dark hero. Um, like darks, we kind of expect them to be uh, PvP oriented mostly. Um, it's not true for every single one of them, obviously, but um, when new ones come out, we do kind of expect them to be pretty good in PvP. Um, Drake and Russell were kind of exceptions recently. They were the ones that were kind of both at uh, really good at both when they first came out. Um, Drake has kind of fallen off a lot since he came out. Uh, Russell's kind of still hanging in there. Um, but Drake does have his uses. Um, but he did fall off pretty quickly uh, because of a lot of... Uh, pretty much because of Void Heroes. Uh, but... Uh, Let's talk about these skills here. Um, I'm not really sure why a lot of people are comparing him to Tix. I mean, I can kind of see why he looks like him. And his uh, active hits four and his basic hits one. So I kind of see where they're coming from on that. Uh, but the roles that these two heroes have are... Uh, Tix and Forces have are just completely different. Um, Forces kind of actually reminds me uh, a little bit about an Ada a little bit more than Tix. Uh, the main reason is because of this Soul Residence. Um, Soul Residence deals uh, passive damage at the end of the round, um, and this is far better than Ada's. Um, so I do think that if Ada's were... At or ever, I mean, this hero does have to sustain like Ada does, but um, this hero is pretty much a better Ada. Um, if you kind of think about that, uh, so Ada had her, let's just go look at it real quick. Um, so Ada has her passive here where the end of the round deals 300% of the enemy's attack. Um, so when you have ticks on your own team, you're actually actively working against your own Ada uh, by running th those two heroes together because Tex is stealing your enemy's attack. Um, so eight, eight, this underground passive damage isn't really a whole bunch. And also look at this percent difference. It's 1500% cap, but it's 10% uh, HP. Uh, the, actually, the attack percent cap is never going to come into play. It's only going to come into play in PvP or PvE. Um, but 8% HP and 10% HP is going to be probably a little bit more than this passive here, most likely, especially with uh, Void Enables. Uh, heroes having a ridiculous amount of HP pools. Um, so... The end of passive damage is going to do well once everyone is void imprinted. So keep that in mind. The longer this game goes on, 
the more people get stellar shards. Uh, this last passive is going to get more potent because enemies are going to be having higher HP pools. So um, I do think that is a good longevity kind of a part of his passive here. Um, and then the soul corruption is, I think, really, really good. Um, obviously, if you're limiting how much they can heal back, that's good. Um, it's kind of like healing reduction, but not... Um, it basically caps how much damage or how much HP they can be at full HP. Um, so say, for example, if they at 10 million HP uh, normally at the start of the battle, um, after a couple rounds, they will have a maximum HP of 6 million. And then if Forces the Sun ends up dying, they will get that 10 million back. Um, but it will drop down their maximum HP pool if they do get a heal. They can only go to 6 million instead of 10 million. So it'll be a little bit easier to kill them next time around. Um, uh, let's talk about the second passive here. Or not the second. Yeah, the second passive here. Uh, basic attack. Quite a big number, especially at V2. 800% uh, of attack is pretty large. I mean... This if this guy has a decent amount of attack, that's gonna be a lot of damage. Um, and then the all damage dealt reduction is going to be really, really nice. Um, dam all damage reduction is far superior than attack reduce when you're talking about mitigating damage for your own team. Uh, if you take away 30 or 30% of attack from Russell you're you're only taking away a small portion of the formula on his active so or whatever is his uh arrows whatever it ends up being um you're only doing a small portion of the formula while the all damage is the overall formula so you're actually reducing more damage by going for the all damage and it's going to be pretty massive um, this is one of the reasons why I thought Flora's could be really good. Having this all damage reduction is going to be pretty strong, uh, especially when high attack heroes are going to be uh, SFX, Russell, Tix, uh, Queen. All these heroes are high attack. So uh, I do think it's going to be a pretty strong debuff. Um, Especially if you're working, uh, having a ticks on your own team, where you're going to be able to switch your enemy's lowest or highest attack by stealing the other person's highest attack. So say you put this debuff on SFX in round one, and your ticks hits SFX, steals attack, and then the next round you could possibly uh, put this debuff on someone else. So... Uh, I think that's going to be really good. It's going to help reduce the chunk of damage coming in, all that burst. Um, and then the active here. Well, okay, let's talk about the, the, the stats here that he's getting. I don't know why he's getting skill damage. 70% um, skill damage is, is just, I think, just a slap in the face. I, I, I don't know. Maybe they just decided to put it on, but he doesn't do dots. He doesn't, that, that skill damage is only really going to apply to one thing and that's it. So don't know why that's there. Holy damage would have been a lot better. Uh, yeah, so kind of sad about skill damage. I mean, that's kind of just sus. Uh, yeah, so that's all I gotta really say about that. Um, he he has no natural DR, but he yeah he has no natural DR, so that's gonna be an issue for him. He has control immunity, but no natural DR, no sustain, so that's going to be an issue. Um, and then the active, uh, fourteen hundred percent at V four and eight hundred percent. That is a lot of damage. Um, but keep in mind, so when people are talking about, oh, he's kind of like Tex, 
Tix actually has multiple instances of hits. So when you're talking about popping unbending wills, you can clear through a lot more unbending will layers with Tix active than you can with this active. Um, now the side effects of that active though are vastly different. Um, Tix is more of a CC while this is just Hey, you buff yourself, you're taking damage, and by damage, I mean a ridiculous amount of damage. We're talking 1500% of attack up to 2500% of attack. If 4Cs has decent attack stat, that's going to be a lot, a lot, a lot of damage, especially against a Rogan in your team. Rogan gives you both attack and crit each round, so that's going to hurt. Um, he also has you're not gonna be, you're not gonna be able to stop the speed buff, um, but you will be able to remove possibly that speed buff. So you're if you drop Rogans to run forces, it's possible if you have a energy into him. Or if you do a feed, you will not have to worry about that speed advantage in the second round because you remove the speed bu buff. Um, so this kind of, I feel like this hero kind of came out to control the buffs going out, kind of limit um, Rogan, I guess, in the meta. I think they, I think DH Games kind of saw Rogan would be an issue, um, just always giving attack and crit and then giving the speed advantage. Um, so this is, I think, their answer to that. Uh, it's a dark hero, ha can remove that, and it works on not just Rogan, but many heroes, because Russell also gives himself uh, damage reduction buff, so uh, that's going to hurt him. And I don't, does he, does he give him, he doesn't give himself holy damage. I think it's just the DR. So he gives himself one buff, I think. Um, but yeah, so, so Russell's going to hurt himself. Uh, Tix is going to hurt himself because he steals attacks. So he's going to be getting that attack. Um, so that's kind of where I'm like, why, why are people comparing Tix and him? Um, their, their roles are so vastly different. Tix is more of a damage dealer and cc -er, um, kind of in your face. I'm going to hurt you and possibly disrupt you. Um, while this hero is more of a limiter, um, they're limiting how many buffs you're getting. They're making you, uh, if you do get buffs, you're going to take damage. So one of the ways to counter that is to not bring heroes that bring buffs. Um, so I think that's kind of what this hero's role is. It's a limiter. I mean, and it, it limits your HP that you, you can have. So that's what this uh, forces is a limiter um that is kind of a new role that is into this game um we haven't really had anything like that i mean carry can kind of be called that too it carry was kind of like an energy limiter so i guess yeah carry was a limiter um but this hero right here is also a limiter so i guess carry was was the first limiter but it was just energy this one is buffs and also hp um so i think this hero is going to be pretty good in pvp i don't think it's gonna be good in pve like i don't think there's even i don't think there's even a reason to test him in pve like at least in flame shrine and broken spaces there's absolutely zero reason to test him for that um aspen dungeon i don't think he's gonna be very i mean Okay, he could be good in it because he has really, 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 really high numbers. Just for pure, just he could just overpower it. Um, so that's a possibility. But he does ha he has no sustain, um, so he could have an issue there. I mean, I guess he could solve some raw waves, but um, I mean, he he does just have a lot of numbers, so he he could do well in Aspen just because he has a bunch of damage, um, but. Aspen dungeon is pretty much solved already. I don't think we need it. We don't need any more Aspen heroes, really. Um, if you're not building a Tix, you're doing something wrong. Because uh, Tix is really good in the Vortex. 
and he will access you to death 100 most likely um so if you don't have a tix i mean build a tix now um so all this rambling about his hero um is he gonna fit in the meta i i do think he will but i don't think he's gonna like impact it super hard now the thing is is the longer void goes on the stronger he's going to be because he's going to uh, limit capabilities of what you can bring on buff wise um so say some future non-light dark hero i don't know gives like an like rogan type buffs or just like buffs your team really ridiculous i mean a way to counter that would just bring forces so I think that's what he's going to be used for. He's going to be more niche, I believe. I I don't think he's going to be like carry level when she was released or Ada level when she was released. Hint, hint, hint. Chinese New Year's. I think everyone knows this now. Um, Four Seas is going to have uh, maybe a tariff effect. Maybe. Um, I don't think so, just because the way I can I, I can see this hero limiting and I, I can see it working. Um, CCL wise, I don't think this hero is gonna be like the best in CCL. I think this hero is gonna be really good in TOC though. I think this hero is gonna shine in TOC. Um, CCL, I'm not totally sold on. Um, he'll probably have a spot. I mean, I, I'll definitely be testing him. I'm going to roll for him. I'm going to build him on a couple accounts. Um, so I'm going to, the account that you're seeing right now, that's 3000 scrolls. That's my old account. Um, it is more of a mid spender level. Um, it's VIP 11 over two and a half years, two years. Yeah. Just over two years. So, um, it's mid-level spending. I mean, I only buy really like cards on it and li limited packs. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll be testing it. Um, I'm excited for him. I, I I'm I'm excited to see how he performs. Uh, it's a dark hero. I think it's gonna be good. Uh, I mean, those damage numbers are ridiculous. I mean, eight at void. So. Most people by now probably have Void 2, Void 3 on a second hero by now. Um, maybe more. Um, but most people have V3 on one hero and then working towards V3 on the second hero. Um, if you can V2 him, that would be great just because of the extra all damage reduction. Um, that's going to be very strong. Um, I, I am interested to see how he works with Flora. That is going to be interesting to see. Um, j I want to see if that stacks. Like if that if that all damage stacks with Flora, that's going to be ridiculously strong, especially in combination with Olivia. Your, your enemies can be doing zero damage if you, if if you're able to stack up Flora, Flora Seas, and Olivia. If that if you're able to stack all those, that would just that would be some insane damage reduction. <laughs> that would be pretty insane. Uh, you'd be taking nothing. Um, but yeah, so we'll see how it goes. I think he's gonna be straight up a PvP hero. I mean, T TLDR. Um, I think he's be good. I think he's be not super good, but you'd be good. Uh, so I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, a little bit more rambly than i usually am um kind of had a lot of my mind on this guy um i was kind of confused why a lot of people were comparing him to tex when i don't even i mean it's aesthetically yes i can see him as he's got the same colors it's got he hits four targets he hits one target on basic so does ada ada hits four random enemies ada hits one enemy on his on her basic so we're going to compare heroes on how many times they hit. I mean, come on. Uh, at least go after their skills because the last passive is a lot closer to Ada's last passive, but is more up to date with the current meta. So, 
I'll be probably streaming in the next couple days uh, for this Heroic Scroll event. Um, so keep an eye out on that. Um, if you're not in my Discord, uh, join my Discord. That's where you can see me. Uh, you'll get a notification when I'm streaming. Uh, but hope you guys enjoyed this. And I'll catch you guys soon when I am building this hero. See you guys later.